Hello everyone and welcome to my beginner to master's guide for Animate CC. So this first episode is going to be for absolute beginners and if you're a little bit more familiar with the program and how everything works, you can go ahead and move to episode 2 or even 3. But for now we're going to click Action Script 3.0. And once you click that you'll be greeted with this screen. Now it looks like there's a lot to take in but it's actually very simple. There's three parts. You have the toolbar here. At the top there's the timeline for the actual animations. And on the right you have the properties panel. Now this properties panel can actually be filled with lots of different windows. You can just click and then drag over. And once it turns blue, you'll know it's ready to snap into place and you can keep them all there. You can also at the top right, you see mine says classic and you can change these preset workspaces. So if I click essentials, you'll see it's a lot like classic, except the toolbar is now over here on the right next to the properties panel and the timeline is now at the bottom. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be working with Classic. And so now we'll jump over to the toolbar. You'll see the first tool is the selection tool, and so I'll give you a little bit of a shape so we can start to have something to select. And if you just click it, it selects just the inside of the shape. You'll see the outline stays. And if you double click it, it selects both of these. So keep that in mind when selecting your shapes. You can also click and drag to select everything on the screen. And that's not limited to inside. You can actually select from way out here and get the whole screen selected. You can also, once you hover over it, you'll see there's a little curved line under your cursor. You can click and drag to edit the shape, which is very interesting. Now the next tool is the sub-selection sub tool. And if you click that, you'll see that there's actually a lot of different squares here. And these make up the shape that you've created. And you can also click and drag this way. The next tool is the free transform tool. And if you click it, you can see that it opens this box where you can edit the size and even the shape and as you see, I haven't double clicked it, therefore it's only selected the inside. So if you double click, now I'm editing the entire shape with the outline. Now what's interesting is if you hold shift and select this, you can actually drag it without editing the shape. It will only scale it, which is handy. You can also rotate using this tool and even skew it if you select it from the side. Now we're going to be skipping the 3D rotation tool and moving on to the lasso tool. Now this tool is also a selection tool. And if you select half of the shape, then you can select that, delete it, move it, anything. You can also select the whole shape. And in general, it's just a faster way to select exactly what you need. The next tool is the pin tool. And it's a lot like the subselection tool. And the difference being that if you click the subselection tool, you'll see that over in the properties panel, you have the properties for just this document in general. So you have the frames per second, the size of the document, which can be changed. But if you click the pin tool, you'll see that it opens up the properties for the pin tool. And so the subselection tool has no properties. If you select a tool that has no properties, such as the selection tool or the subselection tool, there is no properties. It just gives you the property for the document in general. But the pen tool has different properties that you can select and move. The next tool is the text tool. And it's pretty obvious you can drag a text box and type into it. Now you'll see that because I've dragged this text box to a certain size, once it reaches the edge, the text moves on to the next line. However, if instead of clicking and dragging to create a certain size toolbox, you just click one time and then type, you'll see that the text moves along with the box. And if you go to the next line and keep typing, it doesn't stop at the certain box. It will keep going and stretching with your text. 
So that's handy if you're looking to create a text box, but you're not exactly sure which size. And clicking and dragging is handy if you know exactly what size text you need and you don't want it to go past that specific line. So the next tool is the line tool and it's pretty simple. It just creates straight lines, however you wish. Next, we have our first shape tool, which is the rectangle tool. And it will create a rectangle. And if you hold shift, it will create a perfect square. Our next tool is the oval tool. And it's exactly the same, except with ovals. You can create ovals of any size, but if you hold shift, it will create a perfect circle. And this is the most interesting shape tool, which is the poly star tool. So at first, you'll see it makes a pentagon. Now, if we come over to the properties panel and go all the way to the bottom and select options, you'll see it's set to polygon and the number of sides is five. So we have a pentagon. Now, if I click seven, we have a heptagon. Now go back to options. And instead of polygon, you can select star. And if I go to the original five sides, you see you have a star. Now, the maximum amount of sides that this can go to, you see if I were to type in 100 and then go back to options, it stays at 32. So the maximum amount of sides that you can have for both the polygon tool and the star tool is 32. And this actually makes a pretty interesting looking shape here. And I believe that the lowest number of sides that you can possibly make is three yes three so the lowest number of sides is three for both the poly star or sorry the star tool and the polygon tool and the maximum amount is 32. so the next tool we have is the pencil tool and it just makes exactly what you think the lines you draw however it has a really unique feature which is if you happen to draw a shape it believes to be a circle, it will fix it for you. So if you draw a really terrible circle, it'll fill it in for you. Same with a square and even a triangle, which is very helpful if you need perfect shapes that you can't get with the shape tools, such as the triangle. However, the brush tool which you can tell actually uses the fill color and not the stroke color, does not have this feature. So this is more handy if you're looking to have specific shapes with certain lines that you don't want to be changed into perfect shapes later on. And you notice we skipped the paintbrush tool. That'll be for a later video, as will the bone tool. And so we'll move on to the paint bucket tool which quite simply just fills in whatever color you have selected. And you can do this for any closed shape. So if I were to create any shape I wish and fill it in with the fill tool, then there you have it. However, you have to make sure that all of your shapes are closed because if you leave a tiny gap, it doesn't know what to fill because it has no closed shape. So always make sure if you're trying to fill something in and it's not working to go check all your lines and make sure there's not a tiny gap somewhere. The next tool is the ink bottle tool. And this is actually the reverse of the fill tool. Instead of filling in the inside, it fills in the outside. So you'll see I have a black line and I'll zoom in a little bit here around the shape. And if you click the ink bottle tool, it will fill in the edges here. So I'll move this up a bit so you can see. It fills in the outline of the shape with the stroke color you have selected and the size of the stroke over here from the properties panel. And the next tool is the eyedropper tool, which selects whatever color you see on the screen. So say if I were to have a blue color here, filled in with this shape and I don't know how to get back to 
this color, say I can't figure out exactly which color it was that I had selected, you can click the eyedropper tool and then select any color on screen and it will select for you. Next is the eraser tool, which is pretty obvious. It just fixes all your mistakes. And then we'll be skipping the width tool and moving on to the hand tool. Now this simply scrolls around the screen. And so if you're zoomed way in and you're trying to get those little details, you can select the hand tool and move around the screen as much as you need to to get those details in. And then of course we have the zoom tool. Now the zoom tool, if you see down here, has two options, enlarge and reduce. Now, if you click enlarge, of course you can click to zoom in and you can even click and drag a certain area to zoom into it specifically. You can also go over here and select show frame, fit to window, show all, which will show only what you have drawn inside your artboard and then you have different percentages that you can select from i usually click fit to window when i'm trying to zoom back out however a cool trick is instead of using enlarge to zoom in because once you click this then you have to move all the way over back to reduce to be able to zoom out you can actually keep reduce selected because even with it selected once you click and drag place it will still zoom into it and then you can simply just click again to zoom out. So you actually don't really need to click enlarge because you can do the same process with reduce. And that concludes today's video over tools and the workspace. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and learned something new. Please leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll see you guys next time.